It's a game of wills right now. I mean, you, you got to continue. You got to believe in yourself. You got to just battle like crazy. I mean, this crowd out here, and they want to go nuts for you. Just continue to play hard. Go get an offensive rebound. Smile out there a little bit. Okay, let's play. Come on. You be the aggressor. You be the most physical. You be the toughest team out there. Okay, no fear. We walk out there with something to prove every single night. That is a great win. Great win. You got to fight for it. You got to fight for it. Focus on becoming a great team right now. Okay, you stay after it. But we ain't leaving here today without knowing that we have punched as hard as we can possibly punch and as many times. Welcome to Berlin Highland High School this afternoon. We are joined by former Highland Hawks girls coach of the, of the lady basketball team, Dave Slaybaugh. 30 years of coaching the Hawks, a lot of success and time for retirement. You know, we, we couldn't let Coach Dave just kind of slip off into a uh, normal life without giving a final chat because of so many things that we've been accomplished in this gym, uh, in this community, and, and with girls basketball in the state of Ohio. Coach, thanks for sitting down. Hey, we've, we've, we've loved the relationship with you guys. Uh, created a lot of great memories. I joked with the kids that um, when I'm in the nursing home and I'm 90, <laughs> you know, I could YouTube uh, a bunch of your guys' stuff. And uh, no, it's been a tremendous run. I, I, I appreciate the ending. I um, I love coaching every day. People keep asking me if I was burnt out. I say I say no, not a bit. I, I I love getting in the gym as much, you know, whatever today as I as I did 30 years ago. It's just it's just time for a new chapter. But uh, no, I'm very appreciative of the 30 years I had. Yeah, when when we first got the opportunity to come up here and, and work with the Hawks, you know, five years ago, obviously we were thrilled because of the history and interested to see. How, what the inner workings were like and what this what this community was really like and it's been definitely a blessing to to experience it uh, both you the team the community just being around and seeing how it operates not just once but like I said five years over a stretch of, of great success to witness how it all went down but coach 30 years 1991 and I know we had talked even five years ago like when you might be done and you kind of pinpointed this year a few years back. Tell me about why you thought the timing was going to be right after 30 years to try something else or to let someone else take over. Yeah, it uh, came down to the family situation. Um, uh, I knew my my youngest daughter would be graduating. You know, this would be her last year, her class. So I kind of committed to that class. I've been coaching their AAU team since third grade. So that group of seniors this year I've had for nine years just in AAU teams and, and summer ball and so forth. I've got a, a, a daughter in college who's going to be a senior next year and I've had to miss a couple of her games so I knew I wanted her senior year just to make sure I, I took all that in and I have a son now who's uh, done with college and looking to start a business and I want to help him and, and my family definitely has been the part of my life that has sacrificed the most with the 30 years and so I uh, just want to focus on them a little bit. I, I still want to help with the program here and we're gonna keep running the classic and whatever Jason needs I'm, I'm here to help him and um, but uh, yeah that all of those things kind of worked out at, to, at the right spot to, to make it happen this year. A lot of success a lot of success um, 689 career wins that's that's fourth right now in girls basketball all time program wins which are probably your most proud of 905 I think right. over 900 most all time in Ohio girls basketball six state titles that's third most all time um and probably should have a few more of those right we'll talk about that here in a little bit uh just on 26 straight ivc titles that's a state record i mean 26 straight 28 total um that's impressive so the success you know really does speak for itself and that's what i think makes makes this conversation so intriguing this program so intriguing that you've been able to do it with with kids that, that have just grown up here um, why is Highland a special place? Because it's different, and I don't think people that are outside of here don't get it. They just think you win because you win. But but why is Highland a different place? Yeah, you know, I think um, uh, I think Coach Reese, you know, whatever, 35 some years ago, kind of matched a couple of things together. You know, we, we always had a great community, great family background. The the Amish Mennonite community has always been known for hard work and respectfulness, and and some of those things that have created a good business environment in our area. The, I see all that success. And then, you know, Coach Reese came in and then um, he started with, you know, just hard work of a program, 
expecting a lot of kids, developing great relationships with those kids so that he could push them. And, and all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you know it, it worked its way into an you know, incredible basketball program that he built. And, and I kind of saw that with, um, you know, I was actually, uh, my senior year, he was an assistant coach here with, with Coach Huggins. And, and you know, then uh, went to college and continued to watch Coach Reese. And then, um, yeah, I just, I feel like that combination of just um, maybe a, a coaching staff that, that has some really high goals and wants to push kids along with um, our community. I mean, we've just had, we've had great parent support. They've allowed us to, to, to be hard on their kids, but understand that it was good for them in the end. Um, that's not normal everywhere. You know, um, everybody wants short-term, um, you know, gains without, you know, paying the price. And um, whether we have a practice at, after a game at, you know, 10 o'clock at night or, or we have a, um, you know, 5 a.m. practice, whatever it might have been along the way, you know, our, our administration and our parents, they trusted us. And when you get that trust, you get a chance to, uh, to ask kids to do special things for you, and then you end up, you know, you end up winning some games. I mean, there was no doubt the, the intelligence of your players, the respectfulness of your players, um, the hard work of your players. I mean, it was it was obvious when you saw it. You know, they were, uh, you know, the five years I was around, just some of the, the best kids you ever meet. I think that obviously translated onto the court. Um, so Coach Reese, I mean, Coach Reese is a, a was a good friend of yours. Um, certainly a pillar of the community. I, I guess I never, until you just said that, realized that while you uh, maybe perfected the formula over 30 years, it sounds like he kind of came up with that formula for success and, and set the standard for you to build off of. Yeah, I think even our relationship with our administration was uh, branded through through Coach Reese. I mean, he was, um, our administration knew that like his, he didn't have a family. His only focus was his players and teaching, and um, and he he challenged our administration all the time to trust him to to to, to run that program, and um, and so I think our administration bought into that, and then and then I was fortunate enough to to come along and get that same you know kind of advantage that um, if a you know, let's just say it like it is if a if a parent was 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 worried about playing time of a, of a daughter or a son and they took that to an administrator it just didn't get very far you know we they trusted us to to, to do the right thing and um, uh, kids have every opportunity to, to, to win jobs be successful to, to play not play whatever and um, you know our job is to to reward some of those things and and I think our administration has done a really good job of letting us do that when you look back when you started in 1991 um, what do you think? What do you think about how far you've come as a person, as a coach? Um, you were a young guy, you know, ready to set the world on fire. You know, how, how did you change over those years? And when you think back to the beginning, you know, how long does that seem? And I'll, I'll, I readily admit that when I first started coaching, I, I, it, was, it was all about me. You know, I was going to prove something that I could maybe have the same success or uh, that I knew, you know, but you know, I, I, it was five or six years, and we worked really, really hard. We thought we were, but we weren't working hard enough. And then it was five or six years into coaching that Coach Reese, uh, the light bulb went on for me, and, and I, he he challenged me that it wasn't about me, never, you know, because that was him. He was a very selfless person. And I think once I realized that it was about uh, just getting my kids to reach their potential and to develop a great relationship with those kids and, and um, then, then everything started to change, I, I think, because the pressure wasn't on for me to prove something. It was just to, to outwork the competition, to, to get enough great people around me. You win with people, you know, you, you, you win with your staff, and, and I've had tremendous staff that has had the same common goals that I have. Um, had to get rid of a few along the way, you know, because they maybe weren't, but, um, but man, that, that was the ultimate key, is developing a group of people that were just in it for the kids, and, and working towards a common goal. I mean, and I think this season was kind of like the culmination of what you just said, the relationships and for the kids. You were all for the kids, they knew that. I mean, Bryn Mullis stood here and you're, when you guys came home to celebrate and basically called you her best friend. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many high school kids can say that to, uh, to a coach, an older guy? I mean, the father of her friend, Gabby. Um, so that was impressive, you know, and I think it worked. What you just said worked. Those kids, the relationship you had, and that carried you on to a six-day title. Yeah, I'm going to miss that. Um, uh, I'm going to need to, you know, find other avenues to, to do that same sort of thing. Um, 
Yeah, I, 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 I love coaching. I love being that to kids. Um, you know, it was a 12-month-a-year opportunity. I don't call it a job. I mean, I just never felt like it was a, um, a job. We, we um, Kuz, my assistant, um, these last 22 years has been a big part of that. Um, we're, I'd get six, eight emails from him a day, you know, talking about <laughs> a kid bet. or a player or a shootout or something we needed it. to do or whatever. But um, it was just a constant, re, you know, relentless pursuit of the next, you know, we say championship, but ultimately we just felt like as soon as one was over that it was about the next group wanted that same opportunity. We didn't want to cheat them. You know, so we just got back to work. You know, doing it 30 years and having the expectations you do, and I think people that don't win don't know what goes into it. And I think the word hard work had become a cliche. It's almost not even fair to say hard work because it's a different level. What What is the grind like to build a program like this? I mean, the dedication, the, the hours, and you enjoy it so it was fun, but I just can't imagine the nonstop, almost mental anguish to a point to make sure you get it right. You know, it, uh, I've been fortunate enough to own some small businesses all those 30 years as well and I always I think I learned a lot from both coaching and from from my businesses I knew things had to be you had to put things into place for long term so we you know we started you know we had kindergarten camps you know so a lot of times our kids would graduate I've had them for 12 years and, and a lot of coaches they, they they're not willing to to invest for 12 years to win a state championship you know they 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 want something right away or and so that was the that was the grind is just committing to say hey we're gonna we're gonna do this for forever you know we're gonna uh, invest in those young kids and and then teaching kids how to um, and we'd sit down we figure we find out what their goal is and then we would help them try and plan that out and you know I think a lot of people know about our gym rack clubs our, our kids consistently shot 40,000 shots every summer and um, did a lot of ball handling and a lot of other goals that, that you know, that they worked on throughout the, uh, the summer. And uh, everybody wants to win in March. Nobody wants to win in June, you know. And so, um, you know, our focus was skill development from day one. And then that was the basis of our program. And then the other part was just we tried to, to teach a toughness level that was different. You know, whether we were outsized a lot of times and so forth you know just I I've said it a thousand times to our players I love coaching tough kids and, and so we you know we try to create a toughness that's not only going to bode them well in high school but it's going to bode them well and when they're 30 and their boss is breathing down their neck and they got a project to do so um, yeah I think it's the hard work and then it's the it's creating a toughness level in our kids. I mean you had to build basketball players they weren't showing up on your doorstep they weren't birthed here necessarily. You had what you had and you had to figure out the formula and you, you got the, these young ladies to, to play at a level that when someone from the outside saw them play, left shaking their head. What did I just see? Because that's not what I expected to see looking at their stature. Um, what kind of pride did you take in that? Because I know when you play a big team, you just love the challenge. You love the challenge and you wanted to show them, it doesn't matter how big you are, fast you are, our girls know how to play. How much did you enjoy watching that come to fruition and knowing that this team was, was established and built that way. You know, the competitor in me loved every second of that. I mean, we would, uh, we would travel around the country, play AAU tournaments. We'd be the only high school team of 200 schools at, a, at an AAU tournament. And we'd say, well, we want to be in the top division. We want to be in your top 30 teams. And we would go play. We'd play kids that our kids watched on ESPN the next year. You know, and so we love that. We and I think unless you um, challenge your, your your kids will respond. I don't think coaches ask enough of their players. I mean, uh, we didn't mind getting beat, and then sometimes you put your kids in a tough situation, and all of a sudden they surprise you. They surprise themselves. You know, we've done that within the classic here for for almost 20 years, where, where we don't bring people in to win at our home event. We try to, to bring teams in the best that we can find uh, to put our kids in a situation where. We have to play almost a perfect game, or we have to play out man, and then try and win a game. And uh, that that formula has worked for us. You know, we we could have won maybe more games over the years, but we just wanted to challenge our kids and ourselves. Um, we always felt like we wanted to play better teams in the season and in the summer than we would ever play in a tournament run. And we've done that. You know, we've played nationally ranked teams all along the way, and had some heartbreaking losses here at the Classic. Had some great wins. Um, but we really laid ourselves out there um, 
I think it's been really good for us. No matter who we see in a tournament trail, we've seen bigger and better, you know, yeah. along the way. One thing I hope you do at some point is take the time and write a book. You don't have to give away all your secrets, but I mean, I really do think, uh, having witnessed it for five years and of course looking through the data, like, that you know how to put together a program. Like, you, you have a blueprint. You have a blueprint, if, but you gotta get everyone to buy in. That's the other part, but the knowledge of of what you've put together here is, is certainly remarkable. So I do hope you take the time at some point. Maybe Brady can help you uh, with that. Yeah, I love talking to coaches. Since the season's ended, it's only been, what, a couple months here or whatever. I've had two different staffs come in and we sat for a couple days. And uh, I love talking. Um, and I've done that I mean, every, you know, when we were starting a program. We, we, we went places that we wanted to be like and asked them how they did it, mm -hmm. you know, and just you got gradually developed your own philosophies and so forth. And um, I think it's tougher in today's environment. Yeah. I think you have to um, get some, get a lot of people to buy in to the program, but that, that also takes time sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like a weight loss program. A lot of people know how to lose weight, but the dedication to do it is a whole other thing, and that's, you know, building a program. I can tell you how, but I'm not really worried you're going to go win, a, win my state title next year. Yeah, it's funny, we, we've said that from day one, is we did not want to be a typical program that waited 10 years for some super class to come through, and then we got yeah. to win a couple years, and then it was over, and we just wanted a consistency. We, we always say we want to we want to knock on the door every every year to a state tournament, and um, whether or not we had eight kids back or we had two kids back, how, how can we figure that out? And uh, ultimately it started with, you know, your summer and your hard work and everything, but then, um, getting kids to believe by the end of the year that, that they were the best team. And one of the things, and we'll move on to talk about some more fun success stuff, but one of the things I picked up, because I pick up a little bit of, of every school I stop at and, and, and witness and experience with coaches is, and I asked you this once, you don't do a lot of game coaching. You don't yell, you're not calling and barking out plays. And, and your answer to me, and this is, this is your answer, is I can't take away their instinct. We've trained them to have instinct, to perform and act. And, we do that in practice games where, where we play and it pays off. Tell me a little bit about that because a lot of coaches don't have a voice at the end of the game because they're instructing the whole game and your instruction's done in June and, and the game days are the days to, to reap the rewards. You know, it, ultimately, it, it's what my players know, not what I know that determines the success of a game. And um, I, you, you, you caught it on tape a few times this year. I many it, Down the tournament trail in our biggest games, I'd always tell them, hey, I trust you guys to make the right basketball play. And I think when kids hear that, you know, just, you go make the play that you feel. And so obviously it's been a lot of uh, coaching and encouragement along the way to, to help them, their basketball IQ. But in the end, that game, and you know, even in Dayton, they couldn't hear the thing I've been screaming anyway. So they just got to go make that play. And, and so you try and, and develop those fundamentals and so forth. And then you let them, uh, you, you let them have ownership. You think you can make a shot? I think you can. I think you can make that shot. I tell the kids that you know all season long, and rather than kids playing hamstring all the time or, or or afraid to make a mistake, I mean we don't care about that. Go, you know, you you've deserved your opportunity to be on the floor. Now we trust you. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I love watching that. I love. I would love the confidence when I would roll into the gym. The confidence of you. The confidence of the girls. It was a swagger in a way that we're ready to play. If we get beat, so be it. You know, you lost a game at Napoleon this year, you got beat, right? I mean, you things happen, you, you, it didn't just didn't work out, but um, you were always prepared and they were always confident. Six state titles, the, the icing on the cake this year in Dayton. How, how much of a storybook season was this? Coming off of COVID in a year where you thought you got cheated out of one, perhaps, to have to put in the work not knowing what would happen and get back there. Just, and in your final year knowing, it was kind of like the swan song. How, how rewarding was this year? Yeah, I couldn't ask it for ask for a better uh, finish. I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate not only the finish, but the, the players and the coaches that I got to do it with. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, "Hey, what was your best player? Who was your what was your best team?" And I think you know every you know over the years, basketball's changed so much. But I think you know this group um, because I had them so young because of having a daughter in that class, and and you know those parents they. I never heard a negative comment from any one of those parents. They believed in us, and then um, and it was devastating last year because and we felt like this class could win four state championships. Yeah. We did, you know. Yeah, we lost in a regional final as freshmen. Um, Southmore, they lose, you know, they lose in a state semifinal when they're they're right there with Afrocentric, and then 
you know, their junior year, the COVID year, and then this year. So um, saying that, all of those things made this group so much hungrier than, than maybe, you know, some teams. And uh, they, they, it was just a relentless effort, whatever we would ask, they, they just could say, whatever we need to do, we'll do. And, you know, even I can look back at the summer, I'm guessing we're one of the, maybe no other schools, you know, we, we traveled around the country looking for tournaments in the middle of the summer when everybody else was looking for an excuse to not do anything. And, and we just weren't gonna do that. We weren't gonna take the chance of not being ready if, if we were able to have a state tournament. I go back and look at the images we captured from the state final, and very rarely do you see girls in tears after they win the state title. They're so excited. They were spent. They've invested, you know, since they could walk. Uh, what, what, what was that like for you to see um, them be rewarded like that and to know how much it meant? You know, uh, uh, investment, if you watch any team, whether they win or lose in the end, you can usually tell what kind of investment it was. You know, if a team loses that district final and they kind of walk off the court and, you know, they're just getting ready for the next thing and, and but with an investment, and that's why the 24 years we didn't win it, it was, it, they were devastated because, because most of those teams maybe invested just as much, yeah. but they just didn't get the, the final prize. That, that's tough. And the easiest thing to do is to not invest much and then it doesn't hurt at the end. You know, so we're, we're kind of setting ourselves up for hurt at the end, no matter what. It's, it's over, you know, but that's a good hurt. Or, you know, we got here, we didn't quite finish it off. And then it's really devastating for, but man, we have this thing, you know, you've seen the poster in our office the pain of discipline or the pain of regret you know we always choose the pain of discipline you know we're we're, we're not going to have any regrets we're going to work as hard as possible um and our kids have really bought into that and they were fun great group of kids great group to go out on you know kids you grew up with because of gabby you know gabby was in their class and um, they all worked hard and that's another story i tell people um you know they say oh you know dave's daughter's on the team I said yeah she is so she doesn't play much people don't understand that <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I mean, she actually quit a couple years back to focus on soccer because her friends were better than her and her dad was okay with that. And uh, I thought that was a unique relationship with Gabby, you know, uh, that with the sacrifices she made and as a father to um, have raised her in a way that she was supportive of her teammates and it worked. Yeah, you know, um, it's, I, I got to coach both my daughters to state championships. I mean, what, what, I mean, what, a, what a great payback to some degree, you know, I, I just I appreciate that. But no, I mean, um, I, I, I'm thankful for, for Gabby and her, you know, she came back to, I asked her if she'd come back, finish her senior year off. She allowed us to have a JV team because we were low on numbers. So, you know, not too many seniors are gonna do that mm -hmm. either. Um, but throughout our program, we've always asked kids to accept a role that um, maybe wasn't what they had in mind. And, uh, and we'd have a role, roles meeting every year. We'd, we'd go around the room, we'd tell everybody in front of everybody what their role was. And, um, you know, it's, it's getting kids to commit to something bigger than themselves in the end, you know, that unselfishness. I mean, I got, I got five seniors that, I think every senior on my, my team, all five of them scored over 25 points in a given game this year which means they could have scored 25 or 30 every game, maybe playing for somebody else. Morgan Yoder, our general, our point guard. I mean, she, she'd end the game with three shots or something. You know, right. she, she was a lot like Lana Hosteller from way back when. She did whatever our team needed in a certain night. Maybe it was defense, maybe it was running the show without a turnover, and, and some nights it was score. And, and just getting kids to commit um, to filling a role that is you know, what, what their team needs. And, but parents, gotta, they got to be okay with that role as well. And, uh, I think that's one thing our kids have done a great job over the 30 years is accepting the, they can, they can try and expand their role over summer and preseason and, you know, but then they've been okay with us, you know, letting us coaches decide what their role was in the end and, and that's been big for us. Hey, get to the next play every time. Let's have some fun, get after it, play physical, let's go. Great D, Kelsey. We have to be able to celebrate some good things when they happen. And that's an unbelievable victory. Going to state, baby! No easy touches for her. Let's go. Nothing easy. We're going down. We're going down swinging. We're going to go fight, fight, and fight whatever it takes. Yeah, let's go. Come on. That was sweet. Freaking sweet. Yeah. 
the goal of the seed and the goal of the team. You know, a lot of kids and parents are, are trying to get scholarships or I feel like a lot of time it gets diluted into what you're really trying to accomplish. You know, it seemed like your scholarships always came as a byproduct of success. You know, no, you never had a missed basketball. You had some great players, but their stats never uh, amounted to that. Um, how do you feel? Like you're playing for fun, you're playing for to teach discipline, success. I don't know what everyone else coaches for or teaches or tries to accomplish, but it seems like at Highland, you have the one goal and it just it leads to other things. I mean, what, how do you feel about how, how that goes? That's an awesome question. You know, um, season ends, we have a meeting 28 days later, and we, we immediately start talking about the next state championship. Because you know, if you don't talk about it, it's never going to happen. If you don't talk about it, you can't figure out how you're going to get there. And, and um, players in their individual media, I love that they tell me they want to be a college player, but they don't get extra minutes on the court for me to get them five extra points a game because coaches, college coaches are stupid. They, they know who can play. You know, I got kids on my, you know, uh, our fourth and fifth leading scorers this year got full rides you know, because they can play basketball and, and they're in a program that, um, that a college coach knows that our kids know how to work and they're going to show up on time and, and they're going to accept the role and they're going to be tough kids. And, and so if, I think if you do those things, you know, I mean, if you do the, a lot of times if you do the team things that, that equate into a state championship, you're going to have um, a lot of colleges want, want, want your kids. And uh, no, I, I love the fact that we've had 49 kids go on to play college basketball. I, I, I love that we can help families like that. And, um, I love that our players, a college scholarship is great from a financial situation, but our kids, they want to play at the college level because they love to play basketball. Yeah. You know, they've invested, whatever, six, eight, ten years uh, to develop a certain skill set that makes them pretty good, makes them feel pretty good about themselves, and they can play. And, um, you know, next year I'm going to get to watch seven, travel around, watch seven, seven or eight, you know, kids of ours playing college basketball. Um, and the fact that they get to play something again that they enjoy doing, you know, makes me feel pretty good. Yeah, I think I've just thought about that a lot lately because it seems like, you know, you know, parents want the best for their kids and parents ask me about college and it's just, they, I don't, no one's going pro. I mean, very, 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 very small percentage of people are going pro. Yeah, so if you're not going pro, <laughs> yeah. so if you're not going yeah. pro, then, then what's the second option? Let's go have fun, win and have some success mm -hmm. and maybe get my school paid for. So I think if you take that out of it and stop thinking that everyone's going to be pro or the next this or that, I think everyone will have a lot more fun. Or just our big thing is just we, we just want our team and our players to reach their potential. So if we do that, the college scholarships come, the state championships come, the league championships come, just focus on, you know, on the next step, not the mountain, you know, not, not, the, not, not the goal of, of, of maybe um, like you're talking about, but more so of just Let's just be the, I mean, let's, let's outwork everybody every single day. We're gonna go in the weight room, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get our shots up, we're gonna do our individual work, we're gonna play some games of one-on-one, -on -one, and we're gonna do all those other things. And if we reach our potential, we're gonna be just fine. We mentioned the six state titles. Um, there's also four runner-ups. You know, there is, uh, what, uh, 16 Final Four appearances for yourself, 18 total for, for the school. Um, Tell me about the times you didn't win it. How much of those staying? Because we were talking, you look at the banners behind us, there's some that, that should read a little differently, I think. Uh, just what, what's that been like in those games you look back on and think, man, we've got six, but we should might be able to have more. Yeah, um, I, I was just took it personal with a, I don't think we, I'm not sure that we ever had, after we got rolling and we got our, got to Columbus the first time. I think every single class always had an opportunity to get to Columbus. And Coach Reese, you, we used to talk about that all the time, is you try and sell this program to your players, you know, and we're asking them to work hard, then they got to see some rewards of that. And so we just felt like if we weren't getting to Columbus every now and then, it was just going to get tough. And so <clears throat> you know, the, the, the toughest stretch for me, I think, was probably when we had three state runner-ups in, in four in a, a span of four or five years. So we kept getting there. Um, yeah, and that, that included a, a harvest prep and two Afrocentric teams that were pretty much the Columbus City All-Stars. And, and they, you know, and all those were, one was an overtime game. Just Stutzman took four charges in that state 
<laughs> final game. I, I mean, I can tell you exactly what happened in all those games, and, and the other two were just down to the wire battles with Afrocentric, and um, <clears throat> those those were the, some of the toughest locker rooms that I ever had to walk into. You know, a senior class that 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 lost a couple of state finals. You know, and um, and their commitment was every bit as good as this year's commitment. It was just um, for whatever reason on a given day, you know, we just couldn't quite get over the hump on those. And and those those were tough to come home and then and then 28 later start to motivate the next class. Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a hard thing to do and, and some tough some tough tough times. And um, but yeah, you know, those things they just they, they also they they drive you. You know, they you know, we my first. Six years, we got beaten district finals by Zanesville Rosecrans, who ended up in the state final all those six years. And um, we, we, weren't, we weren't working hard enough. You know, we, we, we didn't blame anybody. We, you know, we just decided that we had to do, do more, start younger, um, you know, ask more of our players and our coaches. Uh, and I think it was that early pain that, that really, you know, set the standards for our program. Do any losses stick out? I mean, I know mm -hmm. from what I've experienced, and I don't know if yours is similar, regional final loss to Afrocentric at Marietta when you were up, what, seven points with not much time left, and somehow they found a way. Kennedy, your daughter's yep. a senior year. I mean, what, what games stick out to you were ones like you just don't know how they got away? Yeah, three, I have three games in my mind that were the toughest. And a lot of it's because of the being a dad as well, you know, and, and my daughter's senior year. We had devastating injuries all season long, and we just gradually kind of piecemealed things together. We got kids, uh, Tiffany Weaver, Morgan McMillan, worked their way back to be able to play in the last couple games of the season. And Morgan came back from an ACL four and a half months, and also, and we're in a regional final against undoubtedly the, the you know, Afrocentric, who's 30 points better than any team in yeah. Division Three, and and I got. My, and I got two freshmen on the floor, Zoe Miller and Morgan Yoder and Bryn Mullet and, and actually three and then injured kids and next thing you know we're up we're up seven with 45 seconds to go in the game and, and um, they come back tied up, go to overtime and, and then beat us in overtime and you know walking off that court with my with Kennedy for the last year that that was that was really really hard. Um, her sophomore year, we were in um, regional finals, kind of the same situation. Um, and then those two, along with uh, Hillary Weaver's class, they'd, they'd, they'd lost the state um, final game the year before. Her senior year was Jess Stutzman, Caitlin Stuckey, Michaela Mast, Noel Yoder. They had committed. I mean, they were relentless. And then to lose that game in a state final, you know, at uh, you know, down to the wire, um, and to come in that locker room, I don't think people realize the the hurt those kids feel right there. But you know, all those kids are great kids now. They're tough. You know, Hillary's a, an attorney in in Arizona. You know, she um, all those kids fantastic careers. It had, I think you know that that drive and that commitment still had something to do with their success later. And um, but man, we just took it so personal for our players when we didn't win it. You know, we we um, we were devastated for them, and just that's what I just never wanted. I just never wanted any regrets from our staff that we didn't do enough. Yeah. You know, so you know, if kids wanted to shoot at five in the morning before school, or or you know, making sure that we you know set up the most challenging summer schedule always, and we always traveled um, every summer out of state, multiple places, and and um, and then sometimes we had to be tough on our players, maybe when they didn't want it because we knew it was best for them and um, so I always felt like that was okay for us to do that. I, I can't imagine again the work that goes into the preparing the seasons and then to lose games you think you can win man you just have the energy to get back up and going but I, I believe that those locker rooms are tough man because you know they really hurt when you put in the work I mean that's when they really hurt and you know to come up short certainly had to be rough. Um, top three best moments for you Again, I could think of maybe one or two, but uh, what, what do you think the moments that, man, they'll never get old and until the day you die, they're gonna be right top of your head? Oh, there's there's a ton. You know, if I had, I, I um, you know, winning the first state championship in 2000 after, you know, um, you, I can still remember, you know, our, we had a player of the year that year, Aaron Hoselder, her coming off the floor, 
just you know that, that big player coach hug at the end of that game where where finally you know eight nine years of losing and and being we were there that was our third that time that I was there we just couldn't get it done and and just to know that wow that we actually have some things in place that equate into a state championship that was awesome by far the you know the greatest moment was um, Kennedy hitting that buzzer beater her junior year against Ottoville. As Kennedy Slayball got it in her hands with no time remaining, it left her hands and went through the nets. A three-pointer to end the game. On my iPhone, on the front screen, I got it. I got it. If I could hit it any time, and it pops up, and I get to watch, you know, Morgan coming down and and you know, trusting Kennedy and, and uh, making that pitch. And you know, we used to do this, I don't know, 50, 000, 100, 000 times where, where I'd, I'd do that and. Can I teach, teach her to be able to catch it? And don't don't move the basketball at all. Just let it fly, and and, and that ball's in the air, and and uh, thing goes through. And I talked her at half court in in the you know, state semifinal. That was that was worth 30 years of coaching. And then obviously this year, just uh, the final to finish it up. Um, the uh, it, you had it on on the um, on the recap, but. Not only to get in the locker room after the game, but then um, uh, some of my former players organized a Zoom call, and next thing I know, I got a call of you know yeah. 30 former players that actually got to be in that locker room that last you know moments, you know, watching us talk to the kids, and then then I at that point in time I saw that all those, all those former players were there. That was that was a neat neat a neat moment. I thought I thought I knew a couple of those anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was a that was a cool shot. I really liked too the. Uh, you know, going around that week, the picture of Kennedy as a little girl on the bench, the ball girl, and then getting a chance to win it was pretty neat. Yeah, you know, that, that that's interesting because that was the same team. That was Ottoville. Yeah. Um, that she was sitting on that bench as a um, as a manager, and uh, we won in overtime. Uh, same coach at Ottoville. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, I don't know how many years later, you know, 12 years later or so that that, that happened. And I mean, I, I love, too, that my family was, you know, all my – Kids were managers. They 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 were in the gym with me, you know, so much over the, over the course of time. And even though they sacrificed a lot, I also felt like my family was involved in a lot of those things that um, that I'll never, you know, never forget, which was great. Yeah, it was a family affair, which is cool. I mean, they were all into it. Your wife was always right there. Um, I love her shirt that has the goat on it. I mean, that's <laughs> that's great. That's you know, for greatest of all time. Uh, she's a big fan of yours, obviously. Um, you know, with with you stepping down after 30 years, you got to think there are people, especially in this region or East District, kind of chomping at the bit. Finally, but uh, that's, you, you probably got some bad news for him, right? <laughs> Coach Mischler coming in, and I'm not sure uh, there's going to be much of a drop off here. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons why I can feel good even now is is that I feel like I got the perfect guy, um, and that's that's coming in. You know, Jason Mischler was. If Coach Reese was alive today, he'd tell you he was probably one of Jason's favorite point guards of all time. Um, Jason was was so entrenched in Coach Reese's program, and um, and I always felt like I would hope that either one of my former players or Coach Reese's former players would would be involved. And Jason's wife is uh, one of my best players of all time. <laughs> it was Michelle Ling at the time, um, so she's going to be involved. Uh, I have two other former players that are going to be involved. Uh, Jason's got a fifth grade daughter. They're already working incredibly hard. I love it. I mean, they're going to be uh, very uh, uh, intentional to, I want Jason to put his own flavor on it, but I know the core is going to be, you know, the same program that Coach Reese and I have had for so many years. I'm, I'm excited. Um, they, they have a, a, a great core back that's ready to accept their leadership role, which is what we'd always, and when you, one of the things I think has been good for our program is we've always played 10 kids a, a quarter for the most part. And so even in a year like here, when, when we graduate six seniors, that still means that there's four kids coming back that are pretty good. And then we can yeah. start to sprinkle, you know, people around them as well. And I'm gonna continue to, 
give Jason any help that I can and, and anything he needs, I'm, I'm here to help, but um, the program is in, is in really good hands. Well, after 30 years, I mean, we could talk for a long time, and we've already talked a good mm -hmm. bit, um, but just so intrigued about, you know, the development of this, of this program and everything you've experienced. So we'll get this thing wrapped up, but, but I'm curious, when you wear Highland on your chest and you walk into games, you go across the state, how proud are you that Berlin Highland, the small Amish community, is known as a basketball powerhouse and the respect you get when they see that on your shirt? Yeah, you know, it, um, huh, huh. You know, our, our, part of our theme is always humble and hungry. You know, I am. I'm just. I'm, I'm very humbled that, uh, that that we've been able to have the success that we've had. I love that the, the classic is known across the country um, because it does so many good things, not only for our business community, but our, and our local community, but our players. They get such great exposure, and it it gets them big games. And, and um, yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm very proud of. of our players and our kids and our, our, our program over the years. Um, I'm not sure how it all happened now that I look back, you know, 30 years later. I, I just, um, I was too stupid early, I just thought we could outwork everybody and then gradually maybe you figure a few things out along the way. And um, But uh, a lot of hands um, helped us to get that done. That's Coach Dave Slaybaugh of the Highland Hawks. Think for, for a minute here, just all the sacrifices that you made individually, it feel really, really good. You want to soak this up like forever because there's just nothing like it. You know, it means a lot uh, just to be your, your coach. Thanks for, for giving me that gift of finishing it off this way and, and um, what a great what a great ending.